Two of the major supercar brands have recently announced new cutting edge models in the Ferrari Dodici Cilindre and the Lamborghini 634. And now the best known sports car brand is adding to that announcement with a release of seven new models. Introducing the new Porsche 911. Porsche inaugurated the 911 with the air-cooled 901 in 1963 and then came the series of air-cooled 911s beginning with the 901, then the 930, then the 964, then the 993 variants. And then we moved to the water-cooled era with the 996.1, the 996.2, the 997.1, the 997.2, the 991.1, 991.2 and the outgoing previous model of the 992.1 and here we are at the 992.2 range. In true German engineering fashion from the 996 onwards, Porsche has always named its facelifted models as a 0.2 variation. As we can see from the whole 911 model range beginning from the 901 downstream to the new 992.2, Porsche believe very much in evolution as opposed to revolution. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. So what's changed in the new 992.2 range? Porsche have announced seven new models in the new 911 range, two in the base Carrera range and five in the GTS range. However, we can summarise the updates by focusing purely on the base Carrera and the base GTS models because those updates will be carried across all the different model variations. Starting with the two new Carrera models, there's the base Carrera and the Carrera Cabriolet. With respect to pricing, the new base 911 Carrera starts at £99,800 including VAT, which is a £17,000 increase since 2019. From 2015 onwards, Porsche introduced twin turbo power plants for all its Carrera and GTS models for the reasons of efficiency and performance. This means that the new base 911 Carrera has a 3 litre twin turbo flat 6 pushing out 388 brake horsepower and 332 pound foot of torque. This projects the new 911 Carrera from 0 to 60 in 4.1 seconds, which incidentally is only a tenth of a second faster than the previous outgoing 992.1 base Carrera. There are some changes, but as with Porsche, they're only subtle changes. And those changes are that the new base Carrera implements the twin turbos brought across from the outgoing 992.1 GTS model and the intercooler from the outgoing 992.1 911 turbo. If you're enjoying the video so far, please give the video a thumbs up, give it a like, very important for our channel. And if you like our style of content, please think about subscribing. Now back to the video. Moving across to the GTS range, the GTS range is where the true innovation has occurred because the new GTS range is hybrid. There's five new models in the GTS range. Rear wheel drive coupe, rear wheel drive cabriolet, all wheel drive coupe, all wheel drive cabriolet and an all wheel drive Targa. The power plant in the new GTS range is a 3.6 litre single turbo flat 6 pushing out 533 brake horsepower, 450 pound foot of torque, 0 to 60 in 2.9 seconds and a top speed of 194 miles per hour. That propels the new GTS model around the Nürburgring 8.7 seconds faster than the outgoing 992.1 GTS model. That is an incredible improvement in performance and brought upon probably by the new hybrid technology. More on that in a minute. The new GTS hybrid system is very innovative in its implementation and implements an electric motor integrated directly into the PDK gearbox. Yeah, imagine what a nightmare that's going to be to maintain in the future. Along with a 1.9 kilowatt 400 volt battery. It's believed the electric motor in the PDK gearbox drives just the rear wheels and the 1.9 kilowatt battery is charged, wait for it, by the T-Hybrid Turbo. The T-Hybrid Turbo implements an actual generator integrated in with the turbo shaft, which drives electrical charge to the 1.9 kilowatt battery. Very, very innovative in its implementation. Super cool. The new GTS hybrid system though is not a plug-in hybrid. It's purely implemented for performance and efficiency. As I said, with that 1.9 kilowatt battery charged by the generator integrated into the spindle shaft of the T-Hybrid turbo system. And this is why there's a single turbo. T-Hybrid stands for turbo hybrid and is very trick in its implementation of an E-turbo that has four operations. 
The first operation is to act like a normal turbo to push compressed air into the inlet manifold to improve performance and efficiency. Secondly, it acts like a turbo dam to slow down the emissions through the exhaust system to cool the catalytic converters to improve efficiency. Thirdly, it acts as a generator to generate charge back into the 1.9 kilowatt 400 volt battery. And fourthly, it acts as an electrical motor to spin up the turbo to improve efficiency to in effect reduce turbo lag. That is a very clever trick implementation of a turbo. I've never ever heard of a turbo implemented in that manner before with those four operations. Very, very clever indeed, enabling Porsche to do away with that secondary turbo altogether. The new GTS range also has rear wheel steering and rear wheel steering is now standard. There is also an implementation of active aero, but it's not really active aero, it's more like active cooling. The radiators for the GTS are situated just behind the front splitter with vents that can open if required to provide additional airflow to cool those radiators but when not required those vents remain closed to improve aerodynamics. One of the major benefits of implementing a cut down hybrid system as in this T-hybrid system is that it's only adding an additional 50 kilograms to the weight of the GTS model so the GTS model now comes in at 1,595 kilograms only an additional 50 kilograms added with the implementation of this hybrid system. If you were looking to purchase your first supercar or add a car to your collection, Rich Reviews has already helped multiple owners secure their dream supercar. We have a mix and match of services to help take the pain away to ensure a happy, memorable purchase away from the stress that can be caused by car research and dealing negotiations. Our mix and match of services include telephone support calls, pre-purchase inspection and car collection video. For more information, please contact me via message in the comments below or at the following email address. Now back to the video. Moving to the interior of the GTS range, unfortunately Porsche have decided to do away with a centralised analogue tachometer, instead replacing it with a 5 gauge digital display, just like that implemented with the Taycan. And this is a shame because it looks like Porsche are going to implement this across the whole 992 generation now. In addition, Porsche have also done away with the Le Mans inspired start dial, instead replacing it with what looks like coming out of the Volkswagen parts bin, a start and stop button. That is also a real shame. All these new innovative upgrades are very welcome in the new Porsche GTS range, especially the trick implementation of the e-turbo hybrid system because Porsche have increased the price of the new GTS range by £10,000 starting at £132,000. And this is just a facelifted model, it's not even a new 911 generation. In conclusion, most of the innovation for the seven new models is across the GTS range. Very little has changed in the Carrera range apart from the upgrades for the turbo and the intercooler. The new very trick implementation of the hybrid system with this e-turbo is very innovative for Porsche and this has really changed the game with regards to how they've improved performance and efficiency and removed the weight of an additional turbo. They've also kept the weight down substantially with only a 50 kilograms increase by implementing this hybrid system. That's a big benefit. However, the implementation of an electric motor integrated directly into the PDK gearbox that just looks like a maintenance issue waiting to happen. That's going to be very costly to maintain going forward. I think a warranty is going to be absolutely essential for the new hybrid GTS range. In addition, Porsche have released the GTS model range alongside the base 911 Carrera and this is very unusual. However, the perception is that because the GTS range was delayed from August last year, 2023 to May 2024, the perception is that Porsche need to get this GTS range out, hence why they've released at the same time as the base Carrera. Also there's no manual options for these new base Carrera and GTS models. However with the 992.1 model range they didn't release the manual options until a year later so maybe Porsche are testing the water to see if there's demand for manual options and if there is maybe they will release it later on in around a year's time. I guess we'll have to wait and see.